Hey guys and a welcome to another video. So this video is about common trading mistakes and generally tips to increase your trading performance. So let's dive right in. Chasing winners. Results achieved in the past are no guarantee for the future. Yet too often people still choose investments that have performed well recently. If you invest in a popular stock, chances are you might get in just before it starts to decline. And of course, this is something you want to avoid. We don't want to buy high and sell low, we want to buy as low as possible and sell as high as possible. Remember that the biggest gains can be made when prices are low. A stock can easily double from 20 to 40 cents, but doubling from 200 to 400 dollars takes a lot more effort. But this is still the same doubling of your initial investment. So make sure you don't get in on stocks of which the price is currently peaking. And instead, make sure you're in the stock well before that happens. Then consider selling when it reaches a high and don't wait for the pullback unless you're in there for the long run. A good example for this is my expectation for the increase in nickel demand. Every electric vehicle will contain at least 50 kilograms of nickel in its battery. Therefore, investing in cheap nickel mining companies that will soon be confronted with an enormous increase in demand might be something for you to consider. Again, be in there before the muscles jump in. I've made a video about two nickel mining stocks that I think are on track for a giant Tesla contract. You can find the link to this video above in your screen. People often tend to see confirmation for their viewpoints and see a rising stock price as a confirmation of them being right. However, the best thing is to work without this confirmation when you're taking a position. I know it's hard to not see any confirmation of what you have discovered, but stick to your plan. You need to have confidence in the outcome of your research. Build your position over time when the stock price is moving horizontally. If you once experienced this being successful, you will feel far more confident next time when you're executing the same strategy. So for this case, I looked at the expectations for the raw material on the long term and how this might play out for the business. Results do not come instant, but ultimately you've done your research and that should be enough to keep you confident. When a stock price skyrockets and you're not aboard, don't be bothered and don't feel bad about it. Move on to another opportunity as there will be so many more to come. And do not FOMO into something under any circumstances. Accept that you have missed a ride and move on, or wait for a pullback and reconsider your standpoint. Having patience is one of the most important qualities an investor must have. You will become better at this over time when FOMO got you burnt often enough and I know how it feels. Not doing enough research. Never trade without doing a thorough research first. 99% of the work of a trader consists of research. Often happens that traders pull the trigger too quickly. Take the time to do a thorough analysis of the company in question. Who are the persons in key positions? What is their track record? And how capable do you consider those people to carry out the plan? We invest in the people who will execute the plan and not so much in the company itself. If those important people in key positions would leave the company, it may very well be wise to sell the shares you have. An example is Tobias Moors, a top executive of Mercedes who has made the AMG branch extremely successful in recent years. Tobias Moors has now been appointed as the CEO of Aston Martin. Lauren Stroll, the man who has a history of transforming small or underperforming brands like Tommy Hilfiger and Michael Kors into global luxury brands, now plans to do the same at Aston Martin. And another example, where would Tesla and SpaceX be without Elon Musk in the early startup phase? It's all about the leaders whether a company succeeds or not. These are things that I take into account when deciding whether or not to invest in a company. Do your own research or subscribe to my channel to see some of the research I've done myself. You can find a link to the series about Aston Martin above in your screen. Sometimes no trade is the best trade. There is no trading strategy that will yield a 100% success rate. It's simply not possible. The moment you think you understand the game, you find out that you actually have no clue at all. Market conditions are extremely important for a strategy to be successful. Recognizing when to trade and when not to trade is one of the most important qualities of a trader. Again, it is better to miss a ride than to be in a losing ride. When an investment is so popular that everyone is buying, or has already bought it, the investment opportunity is already lost because it has already peaked. And generally, the masses do not buy until an investment has already seen an increase in value. It is often better to first wait for the usually inevitable correction at such a moment and only then step in. Never jump in when it is peaking. Investing is long-term work. Based on my personal experience, it is my firm belief that investing is a long-term process. 
I've done day trading with mixed results and only a very small group of people are successful in this area. For the average retail investor, this isn't something that you can master easily. You need a very specific skill set for this to be successful. So, focus more on the longer term on things that you are able to predict with more accuracy. What I mean with this is that we can predict an increase in demand into a certain product over time, but it's a lot harder to predict how the stock will perform today or tomorrow, let alone predicting red or green candles in a chart. Not saying this is impossible, because people are making money by doing so, but for the average retail investor this is not where the money is to be found. Trading too much. The feeling you get when selling a stock with decent profits can be addictive. The problem here is that in order to relive that feeling again, you can become a little reckless. This leads to trading because of trading in pursuit of that ecstatic feeling. Also, when the stock doesn't immediately do what you'd expect it to do, don't sell it too quickly and invest it in yet another stock. This way you become a thief of your own wallet. It makes you sell with losses, after which the stock might go up again the next day, luring you into the stock again. This is also called revenge trading. Stocks tend to go up and down. Have you ever seen a stock market that went up in a single straight line? No, me neither. Investing for the average Joe works best if done for the longer term. If there's something that I've learned to get under control, it's my personal habit of being impulsive sometimes. Long ago I panic sold this stock when there was a double digit dive. And now I buy some more as I see it is a great opportunity to buy at discount prices. A good investor is not fickle. He or she has a specific goal, good strategy and most important, sticks to that strategy. Stock trading is all about learning and controlling emotions. If you are a fickle person, it's important to unlearn this behavior. Most successful investors have learned often by losing a lot of money, not to be led or misled by events or opinions of others. They stick to their own investment strategy, no matter what. If you have done your research, and are actively following every bit of news in the company you have invested in, you take away a great deal of uncertainty for yourself. Having great confidence in the future means you're not impressed by a double digit drop on a single day. Tesla did a 21% drop in September 2020. I celebrated the day and bought more shares at discount prices. Whoever buys or sells with every fluctuation makes his broker rich instead of his or herself. The more you spend on transaction fees, the less you have left to really invest. So, before we move on, would you be so kind to press the like button below this video? This shows YouTube you appreciate the content and results in them showing this video to more people. Thank you and much appreciated. Let's move on. Following the experts. One of the most important things to do before you start investing is do your homework. You invest with your own money and you're the only person responsible for this. Afterwards, it makes no sense to hide behind the fact that a certain expert recommended it. If someone asks you on a birthday why you have invested in a particular stock, you need to be able to tell them a whole story as to what made you come to this point. You're only able to do that when you have done proper research because you remember those arguments in detail. Literally everybody can call himself an expert. Experts who are completely wrong are just as common as experts who seem to be right more of the time. Don't just follow someone, the best results come from your own research. Buying many different stocks means spreading risk. However, the downside of that is that you can never closely follow all those companies at the same time. So it's more like some sort of gambling and hoping that they'll all do well. In my opinion, people who think and act this way are not very sensible. As a side note, I did the same when I was younger, but I learned this wasn't the way to go for me. When investing, you do this because you believe in a certain plan, product or service and have been able to find many arguments that support your vision. Of course, you want to stay up to date with all the developments in and around a company, so you will have to follow specific websites that provide you with this information. Doing so for 20 different companies at a time means you basically have no time left to live and also leads to you consuming far less detailed information than you reasonably should. Greed and emotions. When prices are rising, when are you stepping out? Have you ever thought about that? What's your exit plan? Do you wait for the stock price to fall? It's hard to sell a stock that keeps on giving and greed will make you stick to the stock for as long as it goes up. But when do you sell? Often I see people selling when it goes down, resulting in a far smaller profit than they could have had. The most important lesson here is you need to be brave and sometimes decide to exit a position that has brought a lot of wealth over time. 
there is so many other opportunities with massive growth potential, some still in the early days, that will bring you far more profits than sticking to that one matured stock. Emotions and investing don't go well together. When the markets rise, there is optimism and self-confidence. Everyone buys and before you know it, you buy exactly what everyone else is buying. But when prices suddenly fall sharply, as with the corona crisis, you could find yourself trapped in a losing position. Less experienced investors often react impulsively to a sharp decline with panic selling, which means they miss out on the recovery. Experienced investors remain calm because they have a well thought out plan and know that the stock markets will rebound after a decline. This sounds a little harsh, but you really need to have experienced this yourself first and feel the pain before this really changes your decision making. Not taking losses. When using leveraged products, not taking losses is a danger to your investment capital. It is very difficult to make that decision and especially at higher leverage, the losses can quickly add up. So determine in advance your selling price in case of profit and your selling price in case of a loss. What works well to get past your emotions is to use a stop loss so that the position automatically closes as it hits your predefined price level. For non-leveraged products, where the focus is more on the long term, a stop loss often worked against me. For example, if the price dipped for a moment, the position automatically got closed, after which it went up again. My advice would be to set a stop loss for a position with a long term vision that has already made some decent profits. Put it at any level as long as it is above your entry price. What this does is securing your initial investment and some profits in the event of a crash. A crash can occur due to the uncovering of fraud for example, or in the event of a massive earthquake or a terrorist attack to name a few things. Beware of a flash crash, however uncommon, would trigger your stop loss and leaves you with empty hands. Taking losses is hard, but in the end it's all about making a profit at the end of the year. Make sure to minimize your losses and maximize your profits. Overconfidence after winning streak. Winning streaks don't exist in trading. The euphoria that comes from a successful position can cloud judgment and decision making just as much as running losses. The best from a win would make you rush into another position with a newfound capital without carrying out the proper analysis first. This may lead to losses and could potentially wipe out your recent gains on your account. A profit suggests that a plan is working and should serve to validate your previous analysis and predictions rather than act as encouragement to abandon them. If you made a nice trade or closed a profitable position, then continue doing something else and call it a day in regards to trading. You tend to quickly become overconfident after a profitable result and become a little reckless or impulsive. Come back later and take a look at what new opportunities are there for you. Well, that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and subscribe to stay up to date with new content and don't forget to press the bell to receive a notification for when the next video is published and see you again next time.